Hi, I'm Anasi Daphne here. Uh, thank you for your next essays. Well done, keeping going. Um, I will, I'm trying, I will try, keep trying to be as precise as possible on what I am suggesting to you so that we can get you absolutely up to your seven with lots of confidence. Okay, you are so nearly there. Um, and I'm just trying to guide you on how we can be absolutely sure. So hi, Sammy and Bess, that's absolutely perfect there. Uh, you're writing to a friend, so informal. Hope you're doing well, lovely. I'm glad to inform you that. Now, this is fine, but I wouldn't really write that to a friend. I'd say that's slightly formal. So, uh, great news. I've finally resigned. Okay, so great news, something like that, and I've showing that contraction because that is okay in informal writing. Resign from, I go probably my last job and start and started. Either I am starting or I started because you've got a past simple there, I resigned. So you'd have to have and am starting. So I resigned and then I am starting. So just complete that verb. I was enjoying my work in the clothing shop, but as you know, the commute was lengthy. I was getting stuck in heavy traffic between all rush hours, which was adding more stress. Um, on the contrary, so here you actually just want happily or uh, on the contrary means, doesn't mean in contrast, On in contrast is okay. On the contrary is slightly different. I mean, however would be the more formal one. Um, but because it's informal, I would put luckily, luckily my new, um, so these things like great news and luckily are fine in the sort of informal letter. And luckily my new job location is just 10 minutes away. Apart from distance, I'm also getting a salary rise, uh, raise, okay. The new employees are offering better perks and benefits on top of uh, a, a great vacation package. So we can use these um, more informal adjectives here because this is what you would do and an adjective is always going to help you. Moreover, in the new job, I got promoted from salesperson to manager. Now, I got promoted is okay because it's informal, but as long as you know that you should be saying, I have been, so I would actually put, I've been. Okay. I've been promoted. Okay. Uh, from salesperson to manager, which means I'll have more authority. So again, I contract that. I'll have more authority and responsibility. I'm excited, as I can also demonstrate my organization skills while arranging a store and managing supplies. Lovely. With this new position, I believe I'll have... Uh, now, I would go, I hope. Again, believe slightly more formal. So, I hope. And then I'll have more time and savings um, with which I'm planning. You don't need a comma there. To do some join some exercise classes good i've always lack of time i couldn't so great well done let's meet up well done really really nice i like that letter that's absolutely fantastic still quite long okay i'm only just checking that because you don't need to go above 180 and i don't know how you're doing on time but uh this as you i'm sure you know has less marks than the task two so for example, this, you could cut that and then exercise class, uh, either just leave it like that or which I've always wanted to do. I mean, just, just think about what you would cut if you just had to get that down to 180, depending on your time. But remember, this has less marks. Okay, so just a few little things there on the, keep showing it's informal, so the contractions, otherwise looking good. So these days more and more people are traveling, clearly many benefit, but some who argue it has drawbacks. To discuss the advantages and disadvantages, so one paragraph for each, uh, and then give reasons. Okay, uh, nowadays there's an increasing trend to visit domestic and international tourist destinations. Yep, this change in trend has some benefits and drawbacks. Now, this is incredibly important. If there's one thing to remember from today, okay, this kind of sentence is very dangerous in IELTS because you're using benefits and drawbacks, but you're not telling me what. 
to immediately I'm thinking, what, why, what are they? And then this essay will discuss both sides, okay? Using examples from, you must tell me where from. Otherwise, this sentence is what we call generic. It could be used for any essay. Examiners don't like that, okay? Every sentence has to be personal for your essay right now. The generic, sort of general sentences, won't get you a band seven. So this changing has some benefits and drawbacks, notably, and then give me an indication, notably X, Y, Z. Yeah, something that you're going to develop here. Um, examples from, and then we want to see where your examples are coming from. Yep, so uh, X, Y, Z newspaper. Okay, make those two sentences personal for you, then you're okay. One of the drawbacks of domestic traveling is heavy road traffic, traffic, which leads to road congestion, singular. As people prefer driving to domestic tourist places. On the other hand, when people visit other countries by airways, long lines are observed at airports, especially during holidays. It's not on the other hand, it's additionally. On the other hand, it's showing contrast. Here you're saying one drawback is this, and then additionally, another drawback. Additionally, yeah, when people visit uh, long lines, especially during holidays, consequently, regular road computers can get delayed for work. Um, okay, which... Um, causes. So develop this a bit. Frustration and um, increased pollution from traffic jams. The new channels often report increased air ticket costs during holidays, with, um, holidays for international travel and this change might make them unaffordable for people in a true emergency. Another problem with increased tourism is uh, that beautiful places and monuments might get damaged with human interference. An article was published in the newspaper so which one, so just make up a newspaper or give a, just say the Times in India or in London explaining how different species of whales are impacted by a rise in boating. Some tourists might not value all monuments and might cause harm, destroying them permanently. Now, do you remember last time we were talking about organisation? So what's happening here is that you're mentioning four points. So this is number one, okay? One, traffic. So two, okay, the impact on business, okay, and road traffic. Uh, okay, three, okay? Uh, increased tourism and things might get damaged. Four, you're talking about whales. Yeah. And then five, you're talking about monuments damage as well. Okay. And then you also mentioned airfare costs. Okay. So there's another one in there. So you've, you've got five things here. So for me, what I was trying to explain to you last time is that it makes it confusing. Take two things and focus on those and really develop them. So, yes, heavy road traffic, okay, people prefer driving, yeah, so what's the problem with this? Pollution, pollution, yeah, okay, traffic jams, yeah, uh, you could have maybe, uh, so environment, definitely, uh, air quality, so take this argument of driving, and you could link this to then planes. Additionally, when people fly, you've also got the same problem. But just take those two arguments, so traffic and pollution, and develop those. Yeah? Um, and you might add in tourism, because I think that's quite interesting, but destroying them. But we don't need to talk about the cost of airfares. We don't need to talk about emergency travel. We don't need to talk about whales. Link your argument to the pollution. So explained how um, in holiday periods there was a 10% rise in pollution, something like that, yeah? Or in holiday period, or some old monuments had been uh, defaced or destroyed because there would have been an increase in tourism. So really, that's what I mean by the organisation. When you do your planning, 
think of two big points and develop them really fully. However, both domestic and international tourism boost the economy, which could be an important advantage. Interesting. Many famous important pla international places, as well as small villages, uh, comma there, as well as small villages, highly depend on the oncoming tourists to improve income. The multiple studies demonstrated that this change is responsible for the improvement in global income. Absolutely. Uh, uh, of global income. Okay, good. All right. Tourists are willing to spend generously for stay and travel, and for the same reason, the growth in airline and hotel industries are highly dependent on them. Good. Without traveling, people might not develop knowledge about other languages, which is a crucial benefit. Excellent. As people... Uh, as few for traveling more, they are becoming, don't use get, acquainted with various cultures, and this could be the reason behind the popularity. That's the lovely paragraph. Absolutely super. Really good work there. Love that. No problems at all. So you've kept that. The organization is much easier to follow. Okay. So you're saying, yes, benefits financially. That's one point. Benefits in knowledge. Second point. So knowledge, we've got that as your first point. Lovely. And then tourism boosting the economy. So you can see, I hope, how that paragraph flows much more easily. It's much more coherent. In conclusion, although, don't need a comma, domestic and international might lead to traffic problems and disruptions in beautiful places, good. Advantages are outweighed. Uh, so you could say, I believe. I know it's not an opinion essay, but you can. I believe that the advantages are outweigh this uh you can not as a passive outweigh this uh as they so advantage advantages sorry as uh, rather than it so it'd be they promote the economy and cultural exchange and i wouldn't use they is promoting just go they promote present simple yeah and cultural exchange so lovely conclusion absolutely fine from there just the organization on that one i hope that is clear if you can just simplify that structure that organization this is a planning issue it's not a writing issue it's planning um then you'll be okay all right really hope that's helpful for you uh, well done i can see your hard work